Hi everyone, and today we will be ranking the three rival Sandwing Queens from the Wings of Fire book series. So today I will be ranking Blister, Blaze, and Burn the three claimants to the Sandwing throne in the first arc of Wings of Fire, an arc being a group of five books. Before we get started, please note that I am not basing this entire analysis on one thing. I want to take into account three things, actually. One, what it would be like for a neutral Sandwing. Two, what it would be like for one of their supporters. And three, what it would be like for Pyria overall if said queen got the throne. And finally, in the end of the video, I'm going to rank them based on this. So if you only want to see one of these done, use the timestamps below. Lastly, this is not based on personal preference or who I believe would have won, but, in my opinion, the answer for both of those questions would be Blister. Also, if you enjoy the video, let me know if you'd like to see this done for the five kings from Game of Thrones or Song of Ice and Fire. So, if we're going youngest to oldest, first we have Blaze. Blaze is the youngest and probably the least mature or powerful of the rival sisters, but she seems to be the most popular, both among the Sandwing tribe and the fandom. She has the Icewing tribe and probably about half of the Sandwing forces behind her, but her actual numbers are disputable and she probably has less based on the actual books. Contrary to what many believe though, Blaze would have been a terrible queen. While she is kind on the outside, she does have some meanness to her, but it's not nearly enough to maintain control of the largest kingdom in Pyria. She is pretty much useless in combat or politics, and has about the intelligence of, literally quoting the books, a concussed sheep. Additionally, her claim to the throne rests almost entirely on the belief that she is just less terrible than her sisters, but for a few years, Life as her subject probably wouldn't be all too bad. If you were part of her faction, sorry to say this, but unless you were at the top, she has probably forgotten you exist. Hell, she might forget you exist even if you are at the top. And when she loses the throne, which she will eventually, the new queen will, odds are, not be so merciful. As someone in another tribe, though, things look pretty great. For the Ice Wings, they, as her primary allies, will be given so much land for their tribe, and, being Blaze, she will make certain concessions to them. While the other queens would punish anyone who supported their rivals, Blaze is, sorry to say this, but a spineless idiot, and really wouldn't do anything about it. Sandwing territory would pretty much be up for grabs. Number 2. Queen Blister Blister is the next Sandwing sister, and the most dangerous one. Quoting the books, she is smarter than the other two put together, and this isn't just intelligence, but cunning as well. She has the most powerful allies, who give her complete naval superiority and can fight well on land, and is an above average fighter but not quite as at Burns level. She has distinctive diamond patterns on her back, as does her twin brother, Smolder, but he fights for Burn instead. She's not known for support amongst her own tribe, but it is stated in the books that she has more sandwings with her than anyone else can realize. She's also the queen who is the most difficult to find, and she already has an endgame in mind and does technically manage to win the War of Sandwing Succession, on paper if nothing else. So, as a normal and neutral sandwing, you'd probably be fine under her. I mean, she doesn't love her tribe, but it seems she hates them less than she hates everyone else. In other words, she'd leave you alone because she has bigger ambitions. For her own soldiers, though, it'd be great. It's been stated in the books that her own are the best paid soldiers, and she rewards them for their loyalty. And they would be very well rewarded, at least until Blister carries out the next phase of her plan. Speaking of which, let's look at how the other tribes would be. Well, it would suck for them. Why? Because while Burn is cruel and Blaze is daft, neither of them are truly ambitious. Blister sees herself 
is not the ruler of her own tribe, but the ruler of all the tribes. Sure, she'd probably let her allies be because it's simply a waste of troops to conquer someone who's already with you, but the other tribes would not be so lucky. 3. Queen Burn Okay, so we've looked at the fool and the manipulator. Now it's time for the psychopath. Burn is crazy. She tortures innocent dragons and other creatures for personal pleasure. She collects the body parts of those she believes to be abominations or curiosities, slicing them open, letting the life spill out of them, and stuffing them herself, to quote the books. She doesn't care about anyone, although this may have a tiny exception with her mother, but this is debatable. She can embody the worst traits of her sisters, being both dumb and cruel. However, she is physically the strongest and the oldest. She has the most experience, although this does not lend her much wisdom. Under her, as a neutral sandwing, you'd be fine until you annoyed her, at which point she'd probably draw and court you. So, yeah, not the best choice. If you were initially on her side, it wouldn't matter, because she wants to keep the war going for fun, so you won't be rewarded anytime soon. If you were in another tribe, again, like Blister, she'd leave you alone if you obeyed her, but she would try and conquer the other tribes until she got herself killed, which I reckon would have happened very soon, even if she had ended up winning. So we've looked at the three potential candidates for the Sandwing throne, who all kind of suck. But I do believe that there is a candidate for all of these categories that sucks less than the others. Starting with normal Sandwings, your life would be best with Blister on the throne. Now, I probably surprised you there, as many believe that Blaze would be kinder. And you're not wrong, but here's the problem. She's a weak ruler, and after all the other tribes have been through fighting for the Sandwing throne, I think that really wouldn't be a safe place without a strong and ruthless ruler upon the throne. Next up would be Blaze, though, for the sole reason that she won't torture you for annoying her. Of course, for the same reason, Burn places last for the average Sandwing citizen. Now, to see which queen would be best for their loyal retainers. Surprising absolutely nobody, sorry Blaze fans, the answer is Blister. So I do believe that Blister did win the throne before she died. She killed Burn, injured Blaze, and as a bonus, 18 years earlier, she was cunning enough to steal the rest of the Sandwing treasure after Heath, Stone, and Rose took the Eye of Onyx and everyone else was distracted. She then used this treasure to reward her soldiers better than the other two put together, and she recognizes how valuable they are, even if she doesn't particularly care about who they are. Next up would be Blaze again, because while she doesn't give a crap about her soldiers, Burn is okay continuing the war for her own enjoyment, which would get many of her troops killed, not that she cares. So the order would be the same for this round, but not the next. So, for the final round, we will look at how the other tribes would fare with the queen in question on the Sandwing throne. I think that Blaze would actually be the best for this, just because she'd leave so much stuff up for grabs and Pyria overall would be relatively peaceful. Of course, she'd die before long, probably killed by Onyx, but because she wouldn't need to turn to the Talons of Power for help, with the right advisors, she might actually make for a decent queen. Next up would be Burn. Look, I know that she is cruel and terrible, but I think that she isn't smart enough to live for much longer, especially if she wants to make war on all of Pyria at once, which she actually does. Lastly would be Blister. So she wants to conquer all of Pyria, same as Burn, but she isn't as cruel, causing some people to rank her above her older sister, which I think is perfectly understandable. Thing is, while Burn would, would die trying, Blister is both smart and strong enough to make it work out in her favor. This makes her incredibly dangerous to those not allied with her, so she would have to place last in this final round. Thank you for watching, and please let me know how you would rank the queens yourself. I enjoyed making this video so much that I'm actually considering making an alternate universe in which Blister won the war. So please let me know if you'd be interested in that. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to update my Wings of Fire ranking list with the Dangerous Gift because bookstores here are closed for four more days. However, my complete review of the Dangerous Gift is out 
and I'm quite proud of it, so I'll link that above. Thank you everyone so much for watching this video, so please like it if you enjoyed, comment if you would like to see me do this for other franchises, or just anything you would like to say, and subscribe for more Wings of Fire content. Remember that every dragon has a story, and I'll see you in the next video.